Hey everyone, I was all set to talk about something really neat and cool from a Taoist perspective and how acupuncture can help you release that past trauma that you've been carrying around with. And for those of you who have been doing counseling and have been doing it for years, you kind of get it because you've been in counseling for years and you're going, hey, not much has changed here. Well, here's where you might want to explore classical Chinese medicine to help release those past emotions, that past trauma. But I can't talk about that today because you know what? I kind of have a burr up my butt right now. I've, I'm just a little overwhelmed at the amount of misinformation, deception, lies, manipulation, censorship that's gone on through this pandemic to force us to make health decisions for ourselves that definitely weren't in our best interest. And just the level of it has has really just kind of overwhelmed me. So now I kind of have a burr up my butt about this. And whenever I hear something that is clearly hashtag half truth, my head explodes. And that's what happened oh, just a couple days ago when I was listening to Bloomberg Financial News. And you know what? I just have to talk about this because what happened during the pandemic, these weird health symptoms, and you might be experiencing these weird health symptoms. And I'll tell you how you can kind of tell what, what they are or if they are impacting you because there are these health symptoms that seem pretty normal, that seems like nothing out of line, but you can't relieve them. You just can't get them fixed. One of the ones that I've been recently dealing with is shoulder pain. People come in with a shoulder pain and you know, they're trying massage, they're trying physical therapy, they're trying chiropractor. They can't get any relief on this. So any of these weird health symptoms where you're going, you know what, I am just getting sicker. You know, I've been feeling so bloated. I'm feeling kind of like I'm suffocating. My throat feels constricted. These weird health symptoms where you keep on getting more medications and nothing changes, you just get worse. That's kind of what's happening here. And I want to invite you to join me in my members only area health hub where we talk about all these different symptoms, what you can do, what you can take and how you can maybe improve your health and alleviate these symptoms. But in the meantime, we're going to do another episode of hashtag half truths. And let's talk about Bloomberg news this week and their interview with CFO from PepsiCo, Hugh Johnson. Welcome to Hashtag Half Truths, where we explore current news releases and what's said and what's not said and what kind of impact that could have on your and my health. This week on Bloomberg Stock of the Hour, PepsiCo CFO Hugh Johnson talks about PepsiCo raising its sales and earnings estimate after another strong quarter, suggesting the consumer is still willing to pay higher prices for its beverages and sodas. Decisions, Hugh, for consumers who are feeling stretched, even if they lean into the brands that you've got, is there a breaking point at a certain point? Yeah, you know, it's interesting right now. If you look at what's happening with the consumer, there, there are both headwinds and tailwinds with the consumer. The headwinds are the ones that you all were just talking about. You know, inflation, higher interest rates, obviously are, are challenging household budgets. At the same time, the job market is very strong right now. Wages are escalating, and people tend to underestimate or underplay that side of things as well. And the gig economy is offering lots of new opportunities for people to earn money. So. Excuse me, guys. Did he really just say gig economy? Yes, he did. Breaking news. These consumer price index, our inflation rate in the month of June 2023, 
has fallen to 3%. That is down from the average annual rate for 2022 of over 8%. You and I have been experiencing double-digit inflation in the grocery stores, and PepsiCo CFO Hugh Johnson indicates that they will continue to pass on any commodity increases to the consumer. Right now, our expectation is that we will continue to see commodity inflation just at a lower level relative to what it's been in in the recent past. So we've been in double digits for a while. Our expectation is that number will come down, but still inflationary, and we'll price with that inflation as that inflation becomes more apparent to us. The Consumer Price Index, that measures the changes in what you and I pay at the grocery store. But what about for all those corporations manufacturing all that food that we buy? What measures the changes in prices that they pay? That's going to be measured by the producer price index. And great news on that front too, because between May 2022 and May 2023, the food producer price index, it only increased by 0.3% less than a percentage point. Great news, Pepsi is known as a great place to work. And in 2022, the top five senior execs at Pepsi received a whopping 14.6% pay increase, significantly beating inflation for 2022 of 8.4%. In fact, if we go back to 2013, we can see that Pepsi has a history of significantly beating inflation when compensating their senior executives. With such good news, let's go out to Glassdoor and let's look at the average raise for the average worker at Pepsi. Okay, that's a little bit unexpected. The average wage increase is 2%. That's significantly under the inflation level. So if we looked at 2021 to 2022, let's say you're making 54,000, you get a 2% raise that gets you up to 55,000. But by the end of December, 2022, if you want to be able to afford the same things that you did in December of 2021, you had to be making like 57,500. Okay, 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 okay. Let me think about this just a little bit more. Okay, if I understand Mr. Johnston correctly, what he said is that all the inflation costs that they had to spend on materials to make all that stuff for us, that they're just passing that on to the consumer. But he also said, they did all this productivity improvements, cost cutting, and that is how they were able to maintain their net income to to the bottom line is what they call it, to the bottom line, how much money is left after all our expenses. So my question is, we know that the consumer is picking up all the price increases, but they also got all these cost savings from their productivity improvements. And I guess my question is, where did that money go? They're employed, wages are going up, they have money in their pockets, and we're kind of the affordable treat or the affordable luxury that you, you, you tend to spend money on anyway. And we're kind of the affordable treat or the affordable luxury that we're kind of the affordable treat or the affordable luxury, the affordable luxury. And finally, Mr. Johnston came out with PepsiCo's stance on aspartame. In all candor, aspartame is probably one of the most studied ingredients in in all of food and has been for a long time. I, I, I like to talk about it and say aspartame is one of the few things that's been around PepsiCo longer than I have because I've been here for almost 36 years at this point. Um, And and the reality of it is in over 100 studies, it's been deemed as safe. Uh, Over 90 regulatory bodies across countries around the world, including the FDA and the European Food Safety Authorities, have all concluded that it's safe. And even the WHO itself has said that aspartame is safe as an ingredient. Two days later, the World Health Organization announced that 
aspartame may be carcinogenic. The day after the World Health Organization announced that aspartame may be carcinogenic, the FDA came out and clarified that aspartame is safe. Breaking news, June of 2023, DuPont and two additional companies have agreed to settle with the EPA for their use of PFAS and its contamination of our drinking water. This culminates over 20 years of effort to identify the dangers of PFAS to our health. PFAS are used in Teflon. They were used in all the packaging in our fast food chains. And part of what made this case so successful was the over 10,000 internal documents detailing decades-long knowledge of the dangers of PFAS to our health and the strategies with corporations like DuPont used to suppress the information from the public in order to protect their product. Part of those strategies appear to be coordinating with high-level officials in different branches of our government. And in the state of West Virginia, where this whole case originated, they have a Department of Environment Protection. In 1996, Eli McCoy was the director, the highest ranking employee of that department. And he assisted DuPont in brokering a consent decree for their contamination of the groundwater in the state. That consent decree was worth 200,000. Shortly after brokering that deal, Mr. McCoy left the Department of Environment Protection and joined a consulting firm where one of his initial clients was DuPont, where he assisted him in navigating this deal that he had brokered. Email correspondence from DuPont to the EPA state, we need EPA to quickly, like first thing tomorrow, say the following, that consumer products sold under the Teflon brand are safe and to date there are no human health effects known to be caused by PFAS. So we learned a few things from this DuPont PFAS case, right? We learned that some corporations are going to try and suppress information that's harmful to their product. We learned that Corporations might try to use their finances to influence the decision through purchasing science or using their influence on government agencies or government employees. And we also learn that if an individual is not aware of science that refutes their claims, then they can say that to the best of their knowledge, there's nothing that proves that this chemical causes harm. And that's a big deal, right? Because most of our research today is funded by corporate America. Even in our institutes of higher learning, most of that research is funded by corporate America. So they're going to fund studies that they want to support their end results. They're not usually going to go out of their way to support a study that might prove that something they're doing is like bad for you and me or for the environment. So that brings me to the study, which was done in 2007, which did indicate that aspartame may have an impact on higher cancer rates in individuals. And what the corporation did that was manufacturing aspartame at that time, they hired a different scientist to refute the claims. And this science group didn't refute it by doing a different study to prove with different data. What they did is they attacked the process and by attacking the process, tried to discredit their work. And that seems to be the most common method that corporations will use when they do the war of science. And here's the thing. If you actually go out and do a search for research on aspartame and its impact on health, you can actually find a number of studies that are saying that aspartame is damaging to our health. And that's the information that the World Health Organization used when they decided that there may be a link between aspartame and cancer 
and maybe it's time for us to start exploring that further. Okay, thanks for coming out and watching this episode of Hashtag Half Truce. And until next time, I will catch you on the other side. <laughs>